go. Hey, everybody. I'm finally here. Oh, my gosh. If you can hear me, please let me know because I'm trying out these ear, ear things, hoping that the sound is a little bit better. So if you're on, would you please say hi and let me know if you can hear me okay. I would hate to do this whole thing and it's just <laughs> muted. Um, be sure and say hi. I'd love to, to chat with you. Um, I'm going to stop my mail from dinging in here so we don't have that noise. And like I said, I'm wearing some new earbuds, so um, I'm hoping you can hear me. I'm hoping that it'll be a, a better uh, microphone for this situation. I am so sorry that I am late today. I um, A couple weeks ago, I got an email saying that my Amazon Prime account could not be renewed because my payment had been declined. Well, I knew that wasn't true because it wasn't time for my Amazon Prime to renew. So I just kind of filed it in my email and just kind of ignored it and thought, well, it's one of those scammy things. Well, today I got a voicemail saying um, that, no, not a voice. Yes, an electronic message I answered, and it was an electronic message. It was from an 800 number, and it said that my there was a 480-some dollar charge to my Amazon account, and that they were closing my account, and that I needed to um, contact them right now to correct the situation. They were afraid that it was going to be... Um, a fraudulent charge. So with the email and then the the telephone thing, I'm like, I could look at my orders and I knew nothing was happening. Um, but I it's just kind of scary. So I called um, Amazon, which is kind of hard to do. You got to look up that phone number. It's kind of hard to find. And um, talk to a real person. And I told the person, I don't even know if you're Amazon. You could be fake. I mean, it's it's scary, but she assured me that it was um, just somebody trying to scam me, that they would never send an email with a link, um, and they would never call me with a, with a link. So they might send an email saying, please contact us about your account, but there would not be a link in the email. So I kind of knew that, but got to be so careful now because it looked so real. Okay, let's get started. The project is going to be really fun, and I don't think it's going to take very long. It's from the Stampin' Up! Mini catalog, and it is on page... 53. I made a card with this um, stamp set the other day. I don't see it real close, um, but it was really cute. <laughs> you can kind of scroll down my page and find it. Um, I just thought these critters on this um, stamp set were adorable. And... Um, I'm sorry, I'm thinking if I have technical difficulties, but I think everything's okay, um, hopefully. Um, but today we're going to make a flip-flap card, is what it is, and um, or what I'm calling it, and what I've seen it called. It's really fun. It's kind of an interactive card, and we're using that. See how you pull that, and it flip-flaps. <laughs> Hence the name. This is a square card. It's a four and a fourth by four and a fourth. So you could put it in an envelope. I keep uh, some square envelopes um, for my square cards. Um, I think these envelopes would fit, looks like a four and three quarter by four and three quarter card. I'm not sure about mailing. Someone has told me that mail, mailing a certain size square card is not allowed. 
um, but this will also fit in a standard A2 envelope because it is only four and a four and a fourth inches wide. So you could um, mail it in a regular envelope, and you could also make two cards out of one piece of eight and a half by eleven inch cardstock. Which um, I have taken a piece of eight and a half by four and a fourth, um, and this is Granny Apple Green. I just thought it was a fun color. And I am going to layer that with, I'm using Pacific Point is my um, accent color. So this piece is four by four. And I'm gonna use some stamp and seal. Put on the front of that. So that's going to be our card base and I'm going to lay that aside right now. We're going to work on this little mechanism here to make the flip flap card. So to do that I have taken a piece of designer series paper. This measures three and a half by three and a half and that's very important for this card. Um, in order for your flippy flap to be centered and for it to be placed properly, um, this piece has to be three and a half by three and a half. Then I've cut out some squares um, using the um, stitched shapes dies. I've used the square dies. I've made one large out of Pacific Point, one medium. Um, well, it's the second largest, I guess, not a medium, um, out of the Pacific Point. And then I've made a Whisper White out of this second die and a Whisper White out of this third die. So those are the squares we're going to use to create our little um, interactive um, piece here and do our stamping on. Then I've also got, this is our little pull tab. This will work to pull our card open and close. This is six by two. Six by two. I'm gonna make sure that's correct because I don't wanna mess you guys up. <laughs> so it's very important that this piece be three and a half by three and a half. This could be anything. And actually it could be, if you wanted to put this on a regular A2 size card, it could be taller but make sure it's only three and a half inches wide so all of this will work and it'll be centered on there. Ask me how I know. <laughs> so you could make this taller but make sure it's three and a half inches wide for all of this to work um, using our measurements. This piece is very important that it's six by two and I punched one end of it with the um, I always forget what this punch is called. I always want to call it the scallop tag topper punch. It is the delightful tag topper punch. But if you have a similar tag topper punch, or you could just punch a hole with a, um, a hole punch, um, you just want to put create a tab to put a ribbon on so people will know what to do. But I'm going to punch one end of that six by two inch piece of this is also granny apple green and then I'm going to score it the other end try not to bang around and make a lot of noise set these aside I'm going to use my um, paper trimmer and I'm going to score this at two inches I'm going to use my scoring blade not my cutting blade two inches and two and a half inches. And those score lines are going to help with our placement of um, our little squares. So we've got kind of a two little score lines there. Now let's do our stamping real fast. 
Um, I kept the stamping pretty simple and easy. It's a fun little card, but I needed some smaller um, images. Um, and I had seen recently that someone had just um, brushed some ink onto a, uh, a card and stamped right over it, and they called it, or they said it, it um, centered the stamping. And I thought that was kind of cool. So I thought, well, let's try that. We've got our new, um, what are these called? <laughs> Let me see what these are called. Sorry, I usually have this all written down, but I was spending the afternoon with Amazon. Blend, they're just blending brushes. So I'm going to blend some Pacific Point ink which is the color of cardstock that I've chosen as my accent color. And I'm going to use the blending brush. Got some gold foil from last week on there. And I this is a pretty dark, bright color, so I'm going to um, rub the majority of it off. And then I'm just going to come to my little stitch-shaped squares that I've already pre-cut. These are just die cuts. And I'm just going to add some ink to those squares. I'm sorry, my dog's going haywire. Um, okay, and then our stamping, like I said, I'm going to keep it really easy. I just needed some smaller images. I'm going to use some Memento Tuxedo Black ink, and I'm going to use this Hip Hip Hooray uh, flag and a little butterfly image for the front of our flip flap card. And then on the inside, I'm going to just put happy birthday and another butterfly image. And I don't know why my dog's going wild. All right. So to start out with, I'm going to use this larger stitched square. And if you don't have the stitch shaped dies, you could just cut squares to work with your your um, flip flap card. This square measures two by two. Oh, uh, it's a little bit. It's about two and one sixteenth by two and one sixteenth. <laughs> then I'm going to add the hip hip hooray flag. And I love how the little ties look like hearts. They're shaped like hearts. I think that's so cute. And then I'm going to add the little butterfly image down here in the corner. She's coming in to visit and see what's going on. So there's that one. And then for this little one that we've got in the inside of our flip flat card, I'm just going to put the happy birthday sentiment and the bigger butterfly image from the stamp set. This one and the happy birthday. And I'm going to put two of these little happy fellas in there. So that's all our stamping. This card, in addition to the flip flap, I also made it so that it opens. So there is a little bit more stamping. I apologize. There is a little bit more stamping. <laughs> so let's cut a piece of Whisper White. I failed to get that cut. And while we're talking about the Whisper White, um, there is no longer Whisper White. <laughs> Stampin' Up! Sadly, our manufacturer of our Whisper White um, paper went out of business. Um, I don't know if it was COVID. Um, you know, a lot of businesses were hurt this year or last year. And it went out of business, so Stampin' Up! had to find a new manufacturer. And they do have a replacement for Whisper White, and they're just calling it White. White cardstock or something. They're, not, they're no longer calling it Whisper White. So, 
um, kind of a sad story, but um, but I believe when you go to order the Whisper White, it'll take you to the new white. And if you see any products today that I'm using that you are interested in, please go check them out at leslie.stampinup.net and click on the Shop Now button and it will take you to my online store where you can see um, all of our products. Again, I'm just going to use the blending brush to just put a little cloud of blue on there. And then I'm using the sentiment from the Woodland um, Wonder stamp set. I'm using this one. Hope your day stacks up to one good thing on top of another. And I'm going to put that little, uh, the butterflies all over there. They're just so cute. I'll take this little guy. He's right there reading this message. <laughs> okay. Now, um, now we're done with our stamping and we can put our card together. So what I said, uh, here's our card base that we started with. This has to be three and a half inches wide for everything to work here. If you're going to have a four and a fourth inch wide card, um, like I said, ask me how I know. <laughs> I tried several different ways. Okay, I'm going to take this classic label punch from Stampin' Up! And I'm going to take my designer series paper. And this is also from the uh, new spring catalog. I'm trying to find the stack so I can kind of show you the colors. They're ombre and they're so cool. Here's the stack. Sorry for my reason. You've got the solid side. I love this. And then you've got the patterns in several different colors. This is Bermuda Bay, Granny Apple Green. Um, I believe this is Rich Razzleberry. And Rococo Rose, maybe? Isn't that pretty? I just love that. So I have just taken a piece of that and I've cut it three and a half by three and a half. And I'm going to take the classic label punch and I'm going to um, insert it as far as it, the paper will go. And that kind of takes it to the center. Um, that's kind of where I want it to be. And we're going to have this little slot that's going to help us... Um, Put our flip flap together. <laughs> and then we're going to take this piece. This was the six by two, and we punched the one in, and then we scored it at two and two and a half. Now I'm going to go ahead. Let's um, go ahead and just adhere. Hi, Susan. Pacific Point and Granny Apple Green are your favorite colors. That's awesome. I thought they were cute together. They're real bright. I'm in the mood for some bright colors. And I'm just going to take a little stamp and seal and adhere my stamped images to the middle of those squares that we had pre-cut before. And we can go ahead and put this one in the inside of our card. Cute. Looks like it's kind of in a cloud. Okay, now I've got this and I'm going to have to um, remind myself how I did this. This is going to slip in like this. 
So we are going to want to, okay, got it. This first score line, this two inch score line, we're going to take the small square and we're going to adhere it right up to that score line, not past it, just right up to that score line. So I'm going to go ahead and put some um, stamp and seal on this. And we're going to put that right there. Okay. Now we're going to take this one and we're going to put it right here. It's going to cover up our smaller square. We're going to glue it on this second tab. I'm just making sure. Yep. So we can fold this like this. And we have the second score line. I'm going to use some um, Stamp and Seal Plus because it's a little stronger adhesive. And I want um, this to be really you know, it's going to have movement, so I want to make sure I'm using a strong adhesive. And I'm going to put that one right there. So that's what the back looked like. And then this one, it's kind of like a little booklet. You've adhered this one to, to the front tab and this one to the second tab. Then you're going to fold this in. And here's your slot and where it's going to come in. You're going to stick that right through the slot and then line it up. Now I lined mine up just a tad. I didn't really want it to fly off the edge of the card. So I lined it up where this naturally has a notch. And then we're going to place some strong adhesive, I would say, you know, tear and tape or something right on the edge of this little square, the back of this little square. So right here. Well, my tear and tape wants to grab my paper. I might, or my stamp and seal. <laughs> It's a strong adhesive and it tends to do that sometimes. But I want to use a strong adhesive because it's going to get pulled on and we want to make sure it stays in place. So we've got adhesive, whoops, we've got adhesive right here on the back of this little square. This one we're going to leave free and open. This is one we're going to put some strong adhesive on the back of. Then we're going to slide that tab right through that slot we made with the punch. And just let it peek out like that. And then we're going to fold this over. Make sure before you tear it down that it's straight. Don't want it wonky. It should be pretty centered. So now when you pull on that tab, that's going to create that little flip flap. <laughs> flip flop. <laughs> Don't y'all wish we were wearing flip-flops right now? Maybe some of you are in warmer climates and you are wearing flip-flops. Okay, now we're going to adhere this to our card front. We don't want to put any glue on this because we want that to move. So we're going to just put some adhesive all around it. It looks like I'm running out here. This is the last bit. I have some old Fast Fuse, which is also a very strong adhesive. It's retired now. The Stamp and Seal Plus replaced it. I will use it. And then we're going to center that right on our card front. So now when you pull on that tab, You've got your flip flap. Surprise! 
Now you wouldn't even have to have an open card really if you wanted to just um, do a four and a fourth by four and a fourth and not include the, not make it a full size card and you could just put your, your sentiment right here or your signature right there. But um, I made it a full card. I don't know why. I wanted to. <laughs> and I just took some white ribbon that I had in my stash. This is from the um, Flowers for Every Season combo, ribbon combo. You get three different um, uh, bolts of ribbon. You get a bolt of um, real pretty... Baker's twine, and you get this real pretty white linen-y type um, ribbon, and then you get a, um, I think it's a gingham, not sure, but you get three bolts of um, the ribbon, and I think it's only like $10 for all of that. Yeah, $10 for three bolts of ribbon, so... But I had this on hand and I thought the white looked well, good, went well with this. You could use any ribbon that you have. Um, now, right now, celebration is going on. And when you purchase anything from Stampin' Up! In, for every $50 increment before tax and shipping, you earn a free item out of the celebration brochure. Hi, Loopy. You can watch the replay. I was a little late. You were a little late. I was a lot late. I was dealing with Amazon. <laughs> I keep getting scammy stuff from Amazon, and I was getting a little worried. It, what? They're not from Amazon. It, somebody is trying to get my information. They want me to fall for their little scam. So... Um, you know, I was just getting a little worried and I thought I need to take care of this. So that's why I was late today. A lot late. You know, you have to deal with it and look things up and make sure things are right. <laughs> but anyway, you can watch the replay because I bet you would love making this card. It's really simple. It's a little flip flap card. And I was saying with the with the celebration right now, any order of fifty dollars or more, you can choose something out of um, the celebration brochure. There's stamp sets. There's beautiful paper. There are I think there's a kit in here. Um, and then there is also, for $100, you get a stamp set and designer series paper. So if you spend $100, um, you can get that. What was I going to say? Oh, so to make this card, if you wanted any of these products to get your free item, if you got the stamp set, which I think is adorable, it's $17. And then if you got the um, the brushes, which you guys, I have a set of brushes that are not stamping up. These are awesome. I've been using them and I'm really in love with them. I don't know. Um, I almost wonder if they would work for my makeup because <laughs> they are so soft and um, they work so well. So if you got the brushes, you get three brushes for $12. Um, I plan on using one for darker inks, one for lighter inks, and then one, I don't know what, <laughs> that's how I'm going to assign mine. And then if you got the tag topper punch that we use to create our pull, that is $23. And then if you got the paper, which uh, we used in our card, the um, ombre paper, I believe that's $11, or I might have got it for free. Let me make sure it's not one of my free papers that I got. Yes, it was one of my free papers I got in the um, celebration brochure. So instead of that, if you got the ribbon for $10, you get the three, three um, bolts of ribbon. Let me show you that ribbon. I use it all the time. I might be out of the one 
even because I use it so much. Here they are. You get, yes, these three bolts of ribbon for $10. So if you got that and then the three brushes, that would bring you up to about $50. And you could make this card. Um, if you'd have to make your squares, you know, your squares instead of, I use the, the, um, the dies, but not everybody has a die cutting machine. You could make this card without the, the stitch shape dies. You just have to cut your own squares. But you'd get all of this, plus you'd get a free item out of the Celebration Catalog. So it's something to think about when you're, um, if, you, if you're interested in any of this. <laughs> um, I think this part is adorable. I am going to try and make a bigger sized one, not just a square one. But I just thought with the small squares, the smaller square sized card looked, uh, was nice. So, um, but I'm going to try some different shapes and some different sizes and see what I can come up with. Again, you guys, I apologize that I was late today. Um, I will be back Wednesday at 2 p.m. for coffee and a card. God willing. <laughs> God willing and the Amazon scammers don't get me. Um, I'll be here Wednesday at 2 p.m. Um, for coffee and a card and we'll make something new. I hope you all have a lovely Monday evening. I'm going to go run up to Price Chopper and pick up my grocery order that um, is ready and uh, cook dinner. <laughs> um, we'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.